Hello ROS developers and welcome to the ROS Control 101 video series. If you want to learn anything about ROS, this is your channel. ROS navigation, ROS control, ROS withdrawals, ROS autonomous cars, everything ROS is there. Learn ROS step by step and push your ROS learning in just 10 minutes of video. And by the other hand, and today we are going to learn about how to configure the gazebo ROS control plugin, which is one of the things we need to configure before we can use ROS control packages to control robots. In this video, you will see how to configure the plugin in the robot URDF files. We will build on this in the next videos. But before anything else, remember to visit the Robot Ignite Academy, our online academy, where you will find practical online ROS courses using simulated robots. No installation required. You will find the link to the academy in the video description. Now let's get started with a bit of recap. Now, so far, we've learned that ROS controllers help us in controlling our robots by interfacing with the actuators and joints. So basically, we want to get our robot to do things. Open the door, pick up a pen, deliver a package. And in order for them to do this, they need to use their joints. Now, in order for us to get them to use their joints, we need to talk to the actuators, which are the motors that help in moving the joints. And ROS controllers is our tool for talking to the actuators, which in turn talk to the joints. And um, we also learned in the previous video in this series, that in order to control robots with ROS, we need to configure them to use ROS control packages and that uh, this configuration is done in URDF files of the robot. Now in the last video in this series we looked at how to configure one of those things which is transmissions and furthermore we saw that transmission elements describe the relationship between a joint and an actuator. So wait a minute here. We said to control our robots we need to interface with the joints and the actuators. So joint and actuators are like brothers and sisters. So and we need to describe the relationship between them in transmission elements. So we can see how important transmission elements are in making our robots do what they need to do because they describe the relationship between a joint and an actuator. Also, we looked at sample the sample URDF file for configuring transmission elements and we saw how transmission links back to the controller types and hardware interface types which we looked at in the previous video also and for the controller types we have joint effort controllers, joint position controllers, joint velocity controllers and joint state controllers and the corresponding hardware interface type. Don't forget we said that the hardware interface helps us to talk to the robots and help the robots to send messages to us. It's like the middleman between our programs and the robots. So it understands the robots and helps the robot, robot understand our programs. So having done with that, let's move on uh, to the purpose of this video. Like we said, is to learn how to configure the gazebo ROS plugin. Now, the first thing we want to look at is what is this ROS plugin and what does it do? So, by the way, what is the plugin? So, we have some other names that we can call it plug plugin. So we can call it an add-in, an add-on, or an extension. Or so it's a software component. Let's know that. And it adds a specific feature to an existing computer program. So in this case here, the ROS control plugin is the software component that has a specific feature. Now this feature is control. It helps us control our robots. And the existing computer program in this case is ROS. So the plugin is an add-on to ROS and the purpose of the Login is to help us with controlling our robots. 
player and on this plugin as an ESO SO extension C shared library. So you can read about more about that in this link. And um, we're also going to look at a sample URDF file to see how this configuration can be done. And finally, we are going to look at how the plugin works with the transmission configuration earlier done. So finally, let's get back to what the Kazebo Ross plugin does. So what does it do? By now we know what it is, but what exactly does it do? And uh, we have the answer right there. Said. So there you have. So basically, what it does is take the transmission configuration we have done and load it properly, so that the Kazebo, which is the simulation engine, can understand it. So once we have our um, transmission properly configured, the work of the of this plugin is to read that information and load it properly. So great. Now we are going ahead to look at a sample configuration file that configures this this plugin. And to do that, we are going to run the commands presented here to copy this file. So go to the location of the URDF files and then we copy the plugin description file. So great. So we have that file here, rrbot.kazebo. So let's open it up to see what is in there. Great. Right on the first tag here, we have a description of this plugin. And the name is Gazebo Ross Control. The file name is libgazebocontrol.so. Remember, we said this file as an extension SO shared objects. Okay, and next, so basically, this is the file doing the work. Say library and add on to get to ROS that enables um, the proper reading of the transmission files, like we said. And again, we have another tag here. Robot namespace and another tag here, robot sync type. So let's add on back to the academy to see what these things are. So the first one is robot namespace. So it's basically describe the name namespace used for the robot. And the default value is usually the name of the robot, which in this case is RR bot. And we also have the control period, which is the period of the computer controller update in seconds. So by default, uh, it uses the Kazepo period. So we can see that's why it's not defined here. It's not necessary because it has the default, default value. The, the other one is robot param. So which is the location of the robot description parameter on the parameter server. And the default value for that is this robot description topic. You can see that this one is also not present here because it has a default value and finally we have the robot sim type which is the, the, the plugin name of a custom robot hardware interface to be used um, with the robots so by default this value is default robot hardware sim like we see that as that like we see it defined here so with this default value we get access to the main interfaces we looked at in the previous video, joint state interface, effort joint state interface, on position joint interface, and velocity joint interface. So great and clear. And that was all for this video. In the description of the video, you'll find a complete course about trust control and all the resources mentioned in the video. Now, did you like the video? If you did, please give a thumbs up. And remember to subscribe to our channel and press the bell for a new video every day. Either you like it or not, please share your thoughts and questions in the comments area. Peace out. Good